Kia Tato. Uh, my name's Oscar. Uh, I'm a socialist activist and a member of the International Socialist Organizations. Um, I've been involved in Palestine solidarity work since October 7th and what else have I put to, to talk about myself here? Um, I've been an organizer for these rallies, um, especially the first few ones. Um, you may recognize me as one of the marshals or for being a loud mouth on the megaphone. Yeah. Um, but uh, today I've decided to get up here because I want to highlight something. Uh, something that whether we know it or not oppresses us, exploits us, that holds us back. Something that allows crimes as vile, allows and even encourages crimes and vi as vile as the ongoing genocide in Palestine. And that something is of course capitalism. Capitalism, the system that links the exploited and oppressed across the world. The uniting set of chains between Palestinians, Canucks, Maori, Sudanese, queer people, disabled people, and the working class the world over. This profit-driven system is the driving force behind the continued complicity of the US, the West, and most countries internationally. Take the US as the most blatant example. They are currently Israel's greatest sponsor. They send billions of dollars in funds and military equipment and desperately peddle Israeli propaganda. Why do they do this? Certainly not because the American people want them to. In fact, quite the opposite. The United States' complicity in the ongoing genocide has been identified as a driving factor behind the unpopularity of the current US government and general dissatisfaction with the system. But they keep going. No matter the size of the protests or the scale of the dissatisfaction, they keep going. Why? Because it's profitable. They don't serve the interests of the people, the working class. They serve money, capital, and the capitalist class, and this is by design. Shame. The United States government has deep systemic ties to the private military industry. The greater the conflict the US can stoke, the greater the amount of working class taxpayer money they can pour into the hands of those who own those military manufacturing companies, which in many cases is themselves and their donors. Yeah. The US war industry are consistently major donors to incumbent US politicians, whether they be Democrats or Republicans. Not only do capitalists use the suffering of Palestinians to extract profit, but they use Palestine and Gaza as human testing grounds for weapons and surveillance technology. Shame. This vile disregard for human life and dignity in the face of money and power is not exclusive to the United States. As I'm sure many of you are already aware, Kanaki or New Caledonia has recently been through a bout of colonial violence following an attempt by the French government to tighten control over their colony. Why doesn't France just let them go? Why do they go through all the trouble of exerting control over an island nation over 15,000 kilometers away? In case you hadn't yet get to the theme of this talk, they do it because of capitalism. It is French companies that own most of Carnegie's industry. Carnegie is home to some 10 to 30% of the world's nickel. Nickel makes up 90% of their exports. It's, export. it's worth billions, billions that the people of Carnegie will never see despite having to suffer through the environmental and social impact. Hell, even the French working class will never see this money. Most of it goes to French capitalists and the rest goes to international capitalists. This is the way of things under our current system. In the Congo, workers suffer some of the greatest violence and exploitation at the hands of international capitalists. The Congo is one of the wealthiest, if not the wealthiest country on earth. For the people of the Congo, because of this current global capitalist system, this wealth has been a curse, not a blessing. Since the birth of capitalism, the Congo has been pillaged and plundered for a profit. First, it was slavery, with their people being sold en masse to be forced to work for one capitalist or another. Then it was pillaged for rubber and ivory. Under Belgian colonization, Congolese were forced to work under harsh forced labor conditions to extract their to extract their own country's resources in a process that killed millions. Following the Congo's independence in the 60s, Patrice Lumumba was elected on a platform of nationalizing the Congo's vast resources to for once use them for the benefit of the country. But of course, the capitalist powers could not allow this. The US collaborated with Belgium, Congolese opposition forces, and foreign mineral companies to kill him, overthrow his government, and to install a more business-friendly alternative. Since then, the Congo has been chained by constant violence and instability, with several armed groups fighting it out with the people of the Congo caught in between, just the way the capitalists want it. 
Nowadays, Congolese workers are coerced into working at cobalt and lithium mines for less than the DRC's minimum wage, which is only $5 a day to begin with. Don't you ever wonder why Palestine's neighbors don't lift a finger to help? Why they don't st lift a finger to stop the slaughter? Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, they have the strength to stand up to Israel. Their people have the will, but they don't. They don't because they have ever deepening financial and economic ties to the United States, and at, the, and at the behest of the United States, they inch closer and closer to Israel. Why stand up for justice when you could have a trade deal, or a weapons deal, or a defense pact, or even just a few billion in cash? No, no help will come to the Palestinians from the Arab powers. It's just not profitable. It's not in the interest of capital, and under this system of profit, blood, death, destruction, that is the deciding factor. I could go on and on, with example after example. I could talk about how the colonization of Aotearoa and the oppression of Māori was spearheaded by private companies seeking profit. I could talk about the plight of the Sudanese or the occupation of West Papua. I could talk about the exploitation of the working class here in New Zealand. Or I could talk about how our electoral system is designed to maintain this economic system. Or I could talk about that how queer or especially trans people along with migrants and minorities in general are used as scapegoats to divert the blame from capitalism. But if I did that would be here for a very long time, it's very cold. So instead I'll say this. Capitalism is the connection. Our climate, Palestine, the Congo, Rinzas, queer folk, workers, Kanaks, Maori and countless others all burned at the altar of capitalism. Capitalism is a plague that stretches around this earth, a disease that one way or another will come for us all unless we overthrow it and replace it with one of our own design. The only way yeah. I can see this being achieved is through international working class revolution. And to that end, I would like to introduce a new chant. <laughs> a chant that I've heard used at protests and rallies across the world for all sorts of movements seeking liberation from oppression. And it goes like this. I say one solution, you say revolution. revolution. One solution. Revolution. One solution. Revolution. One solution. Revolution. The whole system. Shut it down. The whole system. Shut it down. One solution. Revolution. One solution. Revolution. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Um, if you are interested in this side of politics and this way of thinking, please do come talk to me. Um, we can have a chat. I don't mind. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so much. Yola.